special together. Don't listen to how we sing it. Folks, listen to the words and let the Holy Spirit lead you today. Amen. Amen. Amen.
didn't get you in a worshipful uh, attitude, there was something wrong. There you go, Mom. wrong. That's right. Take your Bibles with you this morning and turn over to Exodus. Exodus chapter 13. We'll be reading actually from chapter 13, chapter 14, chapter 15. I see some of your eyes brightening up. <laughs> I'm going to preach on this morning detours, dead ends, and dry holes. As you look at this passage of Scripture, you will see that it's about the Israelites and God leading them and taking them for the purpose that He wants to use them. But as I develop the sermon, you will find that, uh, and we we'll read the uh, 13th chapter in a minute, but you will find that God leading them, but they were not ready for what God wanted them to do. So what did He do? He took them from the detour. And then He left the detour, and then uh, they uh, found out that... Uh, where he had led them to, getting them ready that they ran into some dry, uh, from, for some uh, uh, dead ends. And then lastly, you'll see where they, as he led them, that they're going to wind up in some dry holes. Now this was the Israelites, but listen folks, maybe some of you right here this morning, that God is leading you for a purpose in your life, but He has found out just like He did with the Israelites that you're not ready for what He wants to accomplish in your lives. And you're wondering, why in the world am I going around and around and around in circles? Well, the reason that you're going around and around in circles is because you're not ready to do the, for the purpose of God for your life. And so what's He going to do? Just like He did the Israelites, He's going to put you on a detour. Look at verse 17 of chapter 13 of Exodus. And it came to pass where Pharaoh had, had led the people, would let the people go, had let the people go, that God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near... For God said, lest peradventure the people repent when they see war and they return to Egypt. But God led the people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea, and the children of Israel went up harnessed out of the land of Egypt. And Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for he had straightly sworn the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and ye shall carry up uh, my bones and away hence with you. And they took their journeys from Sukkoth and, and, and encamped in Etham in the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of the cloud to lead them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. He took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. Now, I want you to notice the fact is that God was leading the children of Israel. It reminds me of the song that says, Oh, oh leadeth me, O oh, blessed fault, O oh, words of heavenly comfort fault. Whatever I do, wherever I be, still it is God's hand that leadeth me. Aren't you glad that we have a God uh, that leads us? The Word of God says, As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are of the sons of God. We thank our God for that, and we rejoice that our God leads us. Listen, folks, if you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, we're not just stumbling around on our own. God is with us. Amen. But as you'll find out in this passage, in these three chapters, as you will find out in a minute, that the Israelites were out of the will of God, and that He had to take them on detours, and when they stayed on detours for a long time, uh, they were agitated. That, but then what was worse than that, they wound up in dead ends, and even worse than that, they wound up in dry holes. Yet sometimes we find ourselves in the biggest messes. 
We find ourselves on back roads and dead ends and dry places. And we say, if God is leading us, evidently He has not read the map. If God is leading, how is it that we, the Israelites say, how is it that we have wound up in dead, in detours, dead ends, and dry holes? Well, I'm going to try to answer that question for you today from the Word of God. Listen to me. I thought about this as I was studying for this message. We must know what this Word says and we must stay with the Word of God. There is so much going on in the world today, and I hate to say it, but so many people are not hearing the Word of the living God, and God is leading me to tell you what thus saith the Lord, because that's who we got to depend upon. Amen. We are on a journey of life with our Savior as our companion, with the Holy Spirit as our God, and the Word of God as our map. Yet, we need to understand a lot of times, things do not turn out like we expect them to. We find a lot of the unexpected things along the road of life. So first of all, I want to show you uh, the, the disciplines of the two. You'll find in verses 17 and 18, God led them about. The Bible clearly tells us that God did not lead the children of Israel the short way. Notice that in verses 17 and 18. God led them on detour. Now this was not a mistake, but it was a divine detour. Now why did not God uh, lead them the shortest route to the promised land? The land flowing with milk and honey. The shortest way is not always the best way. God has a purpose many times in His detours. And in verse 17, it tells us why God did not lead them directly uh, to the promised land. God knew that had He taken them the straight way, and notice the passages I read to you, He had taken them the straight way, they would have gone through Philistia, they would have met up with the war and the white people of Philistine, the Philistines, and they would have been frightened and they would have, would have turned around and they had gone right back to Egypt. God knew that. And so uh, he, he knew they would do that and they would become discouraged and become dismayed and they would come defeated. And God knew they were not ready to go into the promised land. He says they're not ready, so I'm going to detour. A lot of times in our lives, folks, maybe some of you here this morning, God is leading you and He's got a purpose for your life and, and He wants to use you in your life, but you're not ready. And you're going around and around and around in circles and you're going through detours and you're going to be in dead ends and you're going to be in dry holes until God gets you where He wants you to be. You know, I'm so glad God knows what I'm ready for. I'm so glad that God knows what you are ready for. God has a land of fulfillment for you. God has a place of blessing for you. God has a job for you. And yet you may be going around and around in the wilderness. And you see, God knows you are not quite ready for some of the things He has in store for your life. So that rocky road and that desert road, maybe God's road of discipline uh, for you. The whole point is God led them on detour. And many times in our lives, He leads us on detour until we get to the place where He can use us, where we are ready. I know in my life before I surrendered to preach, I, I wouldn't do it. I was not ready uh, to preach the Word of God. And then God got me to the place that He uh, detoured me around. And He got me into the place where He could use me. And bless God, He's been using me ever since because I looked up to Him and I followed Him. And that's what God was doing with the Israelites. He said, you're not ready. I'm going to say you're going to detour until you do get ready. Sometimes, folks, you can get there too quick. <laughs> I've seen those 90 day wonders, uh, uh, Brother Brad and Brother D, uh, I, I mean, uh, Brother Wade, and they go up like a rocket, they come down like a rock. You see, the wilderness of God is God's boot camp to toughen them up. Now, notice where God led them. He led them through the wilderness in verse 18. Now, the wilderness was a place of hardship and drought and discipline. What was God doing with them out there uh, in that wilderness? Well, God was simply trying to toughen them up. And when He leads us around nature, God is simply trying to toughen us up. And He will. It was God's training camp and God was getting them ready. 
Now, this they would read this passage of Scripture and they did not understand. They did not know what was going on. But let me tell you something. They did not have to know what was going on because God knew and brother got that is enough. They may never have heard of the Philistine, but God knew they were not ready. Maybe you have been praying and asking God to give you a certain job and you have not received an answer for that. Maybe you have been praying for a certain thing and no answer has come. Maybe you're wondering why it seems you're going around in circles. Well, God knows that you are not ready. Listen, God called Moses. And to get Moses, he knew, was not, he knew Moses was not ready. What did he do? He put him on the back side of the desert. He was there for 40 years. God called Paul, and Paul was not ready. And God sent him down to the Arabia and got him ready. Now, that is a blessing to me because often we think we have to go, have to be achieving and going in a straight line or we're not in the will of God. Not necessarily so. The important thing is not that you know, but that God knows and you are to follow Him. God knows where you're supposed to be. God knows the purpose of your life. And you may be going around and around today, but He's going to have you around in circles and circles until you look to Him as the Israelites did. Look at verses 21 and 22. He says, The pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire to lead day and night. This represents the Holy Spirit was leading them after God redeems us. He sends the Holy Spirit to lead us. And just as the Holy Spirit was their guide up there in the wilderness, the Holy Spirit is my guide in this wilderness that I'm walking in. And it is a wilderness uh, here in this world uh, today. And, and let me tell you something, the important thing is not where I'm going. The important thing is that day by day, I have my eyes on the pillow of the cloud in the daytime and my eyes on the pillow of fire by night. Now, it may be you going round and around in circles because you have not read your mouth and not, and not listened to your guide. It may be that you are out of the will of God. It may be you are stumbling and bumbling, uh, bumbling around in some wilderness ways and you have no business being there. But it may be that you are perfectly in the will of God and God knows exactly what He's doing with you and you are still going around in circles. Well, let me tell you something, folks. It is your responsibility to make sure that your eyes are upon the Lord. Our eyes are upon all other things. But let me tell you something, folks. It's time that we get our eyes upon God and get our eyes upon the Lord and He's going to lead us where He wants us to be. If you're not ready, you're going to go on detour. Amen. You don't have to understand why things do not work out for you right now. There are some things that God knows that you do not know. God sees some Philistines in your life mm -hmm. that you don't see. God sees some weaknesses in your life that you, that you don't see. Just keep your eyes on Him. Mm -hmm. Remember the discipline of divine detours. God had led them into the wilderness for a purpose. It was God's boot camp. All the way my Savior leads me. Cheers each winding path I tread. Give me grace for every trial. Feed me with the living bread. And then second, the dilemma, dilemma of the Kedins in Exodus chapter 14, verses 8 through 12. Now remember, they are still serving the Lord as they sometimes has come to sometimes more aggravating than a detour. There's something worse than a detour, and that is to be on detour for a long time and then come to a dead end. That is where the Israelites had come to, and God was still leading them. They were, on you look at the scripture, they were on one side of the mountain. On the front side is the Red Sea, and on the, their trail in hot pursuit is Pharaoh with blood in his eyes. They were between the sword and the sea, boxed in, and they could see no way out. So what did they do? They began to blame Moses and their ag aggravation with the nature began to turn to desperation or with the dead ends. Now, they were not there by accident. It was very clear that God was leading them there. In Exodus chapter 14, verses 1 and 2, look at that. They were where God intended for them to be and it was for a purpose. Look at verse 3. God was using the Israelites to bait the hook as, as He judges Pharaoh. Look at verse 4. God had a purpose. Now let me say this. You are going to come to situations in your life that are not just aggravating, but you're going to come to some place where you are right up against it. Folks, if you had not been up against it, you're going to find somewhere, somewhere along the line you're going to be up against it. 
God may lead you to a place of desperation where it would seem there is no way out. No preacher can tell you any way out by you doing a sermon. No book can help you. No way out. It's not a discipline. It's a dilemma of a dead end. But listen, when you come to that place, let me tell you something. There's no panic in heaven. Just plan. There's, there has never been a panic in heaven. God always knows what He is doing. You see, the Israelites did not know, but God did. You may not know, but God does. And that's why He's got you here this morning. So you can hear this message that I'm preaching this morning. They were out of the will of God. They were there. Uh, there was so a place of desperation where they were. And they could come to a place of dependence. That's what God wanted them to do. They were desperate, but God wanted them to come and depend upon Him. Dead ends are places where we come and we see no way out. So we must cast ourselves completely and totally upon the Lord to depend upon Him. In Exodus chapter 14, verses 13, 16, what is the purpose of dead ends in your life? When you are led to a dead end by the hand of God, what is the purpose of it? Well, there are four things I want to share with you this morning that God told them that are true for us today. One, in verse 13, fear not. Fear not. You see, it may be uh, that you are brought to a place where there seems no way out and all kinds of things to fear. Then God says, fear not. Friend, I do not know where you may be today. I don't know where you are now. But I want you to know one thing. Jesus Christ is sufficient no matter where you are today. And then we see in the uh, second place, he said in verse 13, stand still. That is, that is, it is out of your hands. Just stand still. There is nothing you can do about it. Listen to Psalm 46.10. Be still and know that I am God. You know, we hurry, we worry, we run, and we scheme, but finally come to a place where God hems us in, and the sea is here, the mountain is there, the devil's behind us, and there's no way out. But uh, Jesus, uh, he, he says, just be still and know that I am God. Amen. Salvation and salvation of the Lord, verse 13. In other words, you by, the, you by the eye of faith see what God is doing. By faith, I refuse to fear. I stop and place myself in God's hands. By, and by faith, I see my way out. Why? Because God is leading me. God is leading me. And then the third thing, in verse 16, go forward. It, verse 16 tells us the sea was divided. You know what God did? He made that that river turned into an eight-lane superhighway. <laughs> yes, he did. He turned into a superhighway. God knows the way for you. Do you have any rivers that seem uncrossable? Any mountains that you cannot climb? It, uh, God specializes in those things that seem impossible. He knows a thousand ways to get you out. God says, I am the Lord thy God, and there's not anything too hard for me. I'm going to tell you something. That, that is a call of impossibility in your life is God's opportunity to display His glory in mine. Nothing is too hard for God. There may be some mountains that you're hard to climb. There may be some, some rivers that you uh, can't get across. But let me tell you something. When God saw that they were ready, He reached down and He blew upon that the river uh, and the red, uh, the red Sea, not the river, the Red Sea, and the Red Sea parted, and the Israelites walked across on dry ground. It wasn't muddy, it was dry. And whenever one of them got across, here comes old Pharaoh and his uh, chariots and all of his men, and he gets right about in the middle of it, and God said, is okay, it's time to destroy him and get my people free. And the, the, the sea came back together and old Pharaoh was destroyed. His army was destroyed and God saw their way out. Amen. Keep your eyes on that pillar of clouds. That pillar of fire. Be still and go far. Then thirdly, the disappointments of dry holes. In Exodus chapter 15, verse 25. And he cried unto the Lord. And the Lord showed him a tree, which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made of for them a statue and ordinance, and there he proved thee. There he tested thee, and he proved. God is still leading them, but notice, the strange way he is leading. Detour, dead ends, and dry holes. They were these people were bone weary, and, and now they come to a place of bitterness and barrenness 
uh, as the scripture says, and they were uh, they were here for a purpose. Now, what is that purpose? Well, in verse 25 is divine providence. He he wanted to prove them. When they make a you know, when they make a new model of an automobile, they take it out on a testing uh, course and they put it through all the rigors and, and the bumps and they call it proving ground. Well, God was testing them. And you know what? They failed miserably. God knew exactly what he was doing. And when they came to this place in the wilderness, it was not because God was mad at them, not because they had sinned. It was not because Moses was a bad leader. It was not because of them or did it to them. It was because God let them to the You're going, folks, listen to me. You're going to come to the same place if you serve the Lord. There's some detours. Some dead ends and some dry holes. Now that doesn't go along with what you hear on some of these TV preachers. Everything is just lovely. We all know that it's not that way. The Bible tells us that God does love, but there's a wrath side of God also. It's not all peaches and creams. It's detours and dead ends and dry holes. And I've been on all three. God was testing them and they fell miserably. Now, that doesn't go along, as I said, with the TV preachers. But the truth of the matter is that God leads us to places of testing. God brought them to this place of dryness, desperation, so that He might display to them the type of by symbol the suffering of Calvary of the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, even in the barren places, even in the bitter places, Jesus is enough. If you don't hear anything else I say in this sermon this morning, let me tell you that Jesus Christ is enough. It's not that you're a Baptist, not that you're a Methodist, not your Church of Christ or Catholic, but Jesus Christ is enough. Amen. This amazing thing about this bunch of murmurs is that right over the hills, was a beautiful oasis in Philippians. And it's Exodus 15, verse 27. It says, Elam, where there were 12 wells of water. You may be camped by a dry hole, and the water you find in your life is bitter. You think that God has forsaken you, but God has not forsaken you, beloved. He's just proving you. Hear what this message is saying to you. It's on the mind. Do not complain. Do not murmur. Calvary. Calvary is sufficient. Just over the hill, God has, has His own aces for you. You cannot see it, but God can. Look, friends, the important thing in, in life is not that you know what God knows. You will never know that. His ways are not your ways. But the important thing is you keep your eyes on the pillar of cloud and on the pillar of fire. Translated in the New Testament language, it says, Walk in the Spirit. Keep your heart right with God. Keep your heart right with God. And I believe that God is calling out to all of us in this day and time to keep our hearts right with God. Because if our hearts are not right with God, we won't lead people to the Lord Jesus Christ. And God is saying the time is almost here. You hear me today when I say this. It's almost here that Jesus Christ is going to come back. And if you're lost, you're going to be left. And hell is going to be your place of torment forever and ever and ever. You need to hear that. That's the important thing. Walk in the Spirit. Keep your heart right with God. Let me close. If you go on detour, praise God. If you get into dead ends, praise God. You find yourself in dry holes, praise God. All you have to do is follow Him. That's where it's all about today. Following God. The Israelites, when he saw they were ready, they followed him. And when you're ready, you will follow him. Lord, I will clasp thy hand in mine, not ever murmur nor repine. Content whatever lot I see, since tis thy hand that leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me. His faithful follower I would be, for by his hand. He needed me. God wants to lead you today. If you're here lost, He's calling you right now. Come right down here. If you don't know how to be saved, I'll show you. I'll have 
I'd rather chat with you. Uh, yeah, no, no, no. To, to, to show you. I want you to leave this place today uh, lost. Yeah. Maybe you're here today and you've heard this message and, and you have prayed and, and God has not given the answer. Well, the answer is that you're not ready. You're going around and around and you'll go around and around until you see the fellow of cloud and the fellow of fire and let God lead you. Right. He'll do it. Father, thank you, Lord, for this message. Lord, thank you for this story about the Israelites. So many times in our lives, Lord, we're not ready and we know that. And God, you put us through detours, dead ends and dry places and dry holes to get us ready. The main important thing is we keep our eyes upon you and you will lead us just exactly like you did with Israelites. Father, I pray right now that there's one lost person before me today that doesn't know Jesus Christ as their personal shape of God. Don't let that person or persons leave this place today without them coming to know Jesus Christ as their personal shape. Lord, we know that time is running short. And Lord, I pray that they will hear that, that time is running short for them to make a decision. And Lord, they're in the right place today because Holy Spirit, God, you're in this place. You're out in the pew. You're right here in this pulpit. And you're right down here uh, in, in front of this pulpit, Lord. And I just pray they'll come and say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sin and come into my life. And Lord, we know that they'll do that. You will forgive them and you will save them right now. And if you came in the next hour, they'd be ready to go. Let no one leave this place today, Lord, uh, without knowing Jesus. Lord, it may be a child of God who's been going around and around in circles. Lord, you have a purpose for their lives and, and uh, they're not ready. And you know they're not ready. And just like you led the, uh, the children of Israel on detour, you're leading them on detour. And they come to dead ends and dry places. I pray, Lord, that they put their eyes upon you and listen and follow you so they'll be ready for the purpose of their lives. And we'll be careful to give praise. Father, there may be some here this morning that needs to lose membership in this great fellowship. Uh, here at Fairview Baptist Church, I pray, Holy Spirit, God, you speak to hearts here this morning and say, this is where I want you to serve me along here with the folks here at Fairview Baptist Church. And any decision made, Lord, we'll step back into the shadows of the cross. We'll place Jesus to the forefront because he's the only one worthy to receive uh, the praise and the honor and the glory. It's in the most precious name, Lord, and I know that I say this prayer, and that name is Jesus. Amen. Brother, one ninety one. Let's stand and say one ninety one. You talk right on the very first chapter. You make your decision.